Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another God of War video. Now today, as we draw closer to the release of God of War Ragnarok, we will be talking about the most recent trailer released by PlayStation for God of War, Myths of Midgard. This is a trailer that did kind of come out of nowhere, but despite that, has made a rather large impact on the fan base. Probably due to the drip feed we are receiving in terms of marketing and promotion right now, but even with that in mind, the Myths of Midgar trailer has provoked the question of Will we finally see Faye? And if so, in what capacity? Because for the longest time, Faye's background and origins have been largely shrouded in mystery. I mean, hell, we still don't know what she looks like. We can only picture it from the mural we see in Jotunheim. So, today, we will be exploring the following, and how exactly does this tie into the Myths of Midgard trailer and the grand calculus of God of War Ragnarok. But, as always guys, before we do begin, I would super appreciate it if we could first get this video to about 500 likes. It's an incredible way of not just supporting this video, but also this channel out as a whole. And if you like what we do here and wish to see more, please don't forget to subscribe as well as tick that bell, as it will help you stay up to date with everything we do here. But before we do begin, here is a quick message from today's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends, the mobile game that has taken the world by storm, and it's hard not to see why. With over 600 champions, millions of different tactics and artifacts, as well as a number of diverse modes, including a campaign, raid battles, and more, Raid is truly a remarkable game that you can pick up and play anytime, anywhere. With all this variety though, I can't help but have some favourites here in game. So here are my top 3 favourite characters in Raid. Starting off with, of course, Valkyrie. In terms of design, she is by far my favourite. Totally not biased at all, but her design and influence of Norse mythology really does add a lot of personality to this barbarian. Next, we have Wuji, an intimidating Naginata wielder of the Shadowkin faction. She is as beautiful as she is dangerous, with a phenomenal design that complements her gameplay style, as she's able to channel the power of the shadows and harness darkness at the tip of her blades. Now, my next and final character is Rul, the legendary huntsman of the Dark Elves. With armor clad from bone and steel, his aim is true, as his arrows won't just damage you, but they will put a hex on you, cursing any who are unfortunate to fall into his line of sight. But with this said, what else is going on with Raid? Well, this month, Raid has a non-stop schedule of special events and activities going on. This includes Season 3 of The Forge Pass, where you can earn some amazing rewards, as well as a limited edition artifact set. Along with this, there are some new champions and a new spectacular skin for Madame Ceres. But it doesn't end quite there. Later this month, Raid is also giving everybody's favourite champion the upgrade he deserves. You may have seen his struggle from awesomeness in some of Raid's hilarious videos, but finally, Death Knight is becoming a legendary champion. So, if you like what you see here and do wish to jump in, please do click on my link in the description below or scan my QR code. If you do so, you get $30 worth of goodies. This includes a free epic champion, Rector Draft, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon an additional champion once you get started. And all of these perks will be waiting for you here. So, without any further ado, let's get back to the video. Now, in the Myths of Midgard trailer, we are introduced to our storyteller, an actress by the name of Felicia Day. Here, she recounts the events of the 2018 game, covering the trials and tribulations Kratos and Atreus had to push through, 
and of course, fulfilling their mother's dying wish. So on the surface, nothing too crazy in this trailer, but is there actually more going on than what we just see? As the inclusion of Felicia Day raises the question of her own role in not just this trailer, but also God of War Ragnarok itself. For those unfamiliar with Felicia Day, she is an actor whose work goes as far back as 2001, having featured in such shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Supernatural. Along with this, she does have a history of doing voice work in shows and games, such as Marvel Spider-Man and Fallout New Vegas. Now, it doesn't take a genius to get what I am insinuating at here, but how much of this could be true and possible? Well, again, for those who don't know, since the 2018 reboot, Santa Monica have decided to have more of a modern day approach when it's come to their style of storytelling. At least in the sense of instead of them animating a scene, they would instead have actors come in and play them out in full-blown motion capture suits. By doing so, they're able to capture both the movement of the actors as well as their facial expressions. I do highly recommend checking out God of War, making Kratos, if you want a more in-depth exploration of how this game was made. Now, since we are on the topic of actors, for those who don't know, the cast of God of War is composed of all very talented actors, with Kratos, Christopher Judge, having been in Stargate, Sonny, aka Atreus, having featured in Criminal Minds, and Danielle Bassetti, having featured in Insidious. So, you get an idea for the sort of people they are casting for the game. Hell, they even have Ryan Hurst from Sons of Anarchy playing for. And he's also doing promotional material for the game. So again, it gives you an idea of the picture Santa Monica is painting with the actors and characters involved. And I mean, hey, Felicia, reading back the events of the 2018 game, is in fact in line with that of Faye's character. As when she was raising Atreus, it was her who educated him on the tales of the Nine Realms and the gods that inhabited them. So that is a fun little detail regarding the possibility that Felicia Day could possibly be the actor for Faye. So, with these ideas now on the table, how could this happen? And most importantly, why? Well, truth be told, there is actually way more we don't know about Faye than what we do know of her. But now, in God of War Ragnarok, with the narrative shifting more towards Atreus and his birth name, Loki, we will learn more about Faye and what happened with her outside of just being a mother to Atreus. With the world now opening up, giving us full access to explore the Nine Realms, we know that we will be travelling back to the realm of Jotunheim, possibly in regards to tracking down the giantess Angraboda, as well as uncovering the fate of the giants. And going off the timeline of events that we do know about the Jotunar, we know that the very last person they interacted with was they before they all died. Whether that be from famine or disease is something we don't know, but I believe will be the key character to provide answers to those questions. Because, let's not forget, after the Midgard Massacre, they went on a crusade across all of the Nine Realms, seeking to help out and save any lost giants that were in danger. And she would take them back to the realm of Jotunheim, or help them relocate to another world much like she would do so herself. And from what we do see of Angraboda in this tiny brief snippet of last year's trailer, I believe she may have possibly moved to Vanaheim, but that is yet another world that we are yet to explore properly. Either way, Faye is clearly a big player in the North series of games, and I think with us uncovering Atreus' origins, we could finally get our first look at what she actually looked like. 
and there always is the possibility of us meeting her through flashbacks or if I really want to push this idea maybe through time travel. As we do know Ragnarok is working in a cycle but we are yet to get answers as to how this kind of works in the series as we only know it's tied to that of the world tree and it gets even more confusing when we have time displaced children of loki scattered across that of the nine realms so going back on topic we could very well end up in a time period where we bear witness to the slaughter of the giants of midgard and what maybe happened to Fey following this point up until she met Kratos. I mean, there's always the possibility, since this is supposed to be the conclusion of the North series of games, that if we ever get DLC for this game, we could end up playing as her following the events of Midgard. So it serves as kind of a way of filling in the gaps as to what happened with Faye, as the story of the North series would ultimately be over at that point. And whilst yes, I know it's super early to talk about DLC, I will say the idea of DLC was briefly explored back in that of the 2018 game before ultimately being abandoned in favour of implementing said ideas into Ragnarok. So, in short, I think that the likelihood of us actually seeing Faye in game could not be any higher. And with the likes of newer actors being introduced to the universe to promote the game, I believe that Felicia Day is indeed the actress who will be portraying the giantess Laufey. To what extent is the part that does interest me? As again, we know very little about her, but with these large gaps of empty space, they could very easily be explored. I couldn't be more excited with the possibility of this revelation, as Faye's legacy is a key moment in the 2018 game, and is really the tone setter for the series moving forward, taking a more grounded, yet still fantastical approach. Now, what do you think is going on? Do you think there is more than meets the eye? Do you think we will finally have our first glimpse of Faye in God of War Ragnarok? Please do comments down below. But for now everyone, this has been it for me. So stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting as Ragnarok comes for us all. Take care everyone, I'll see you soon.